guys, this is Stormouse03, and this is my Witcher 2 Assassins of Kings Dark Difficulty walkthrough. So we're going to be finishing up the prologue here in the Dungeons of the Lavalettes, and we're going to be getting an achievement right off the bat here. You'll start off chained up, and you're going to want to sort of piss one of these guys off <laughs> and that will give you a little cutscene where you uh, take him out by surprise so you will only end up having to fight one of the guards instead of two which is good and so then you just um, hit the button when it prompts you to these fist fights are pretty easy you'll either have one button press or a combination of two so nothing all that difficult and as soon as you finish the fight you should get the gambler achievement if you won a game of dice poker and arm wrestling in the camp at the beginning you'll get it right there if not you'll have the opportunity to do those things later on in the game and so you pick up the key head on out you should have leveled up at this point, so you want to go ahead and put your point into something here. I'm going to choose uh, this one here, Fortitude, which uh, allows your Vigor to regenerate 10% faster during combat, which is good. That's, that's what we use for our magic. So that is definitely something that you want. You'll notice that you don't have very much equipment right now. But uh, don't worry, all the stuff that you had from the beginning you'll pick back up later. Uh, if you grab the stuff off of that little rack there, you will get this small blackjack, which is a weapon that you can use. It actually has a really good ability to stun enemies to give you kind of the opportunity to have an instant kill sometimes, which is pretty cool. You can also sneak through this area. I'll show you the sneaking a little bit later on uh, you can use your magic to put out the lights and so what I'm doing now is actually sort of forgetting how to sneak here <laughs> so if you have your weapon pulled out you will not be able to give get a sneak attack on these guards and so that was kind of a, a mistake on my part. I had forgotten that I couldn't sneak while I had my weapon equipped. So that's just, if you want to try to sneak through here instead of fighting these guards, then just make sure that you have your weapon sheathed. And that will allow you to sort of sneak up behind them and get some, some sneak kills, which is cool. Uh, so... If you don't want to sneak, you don't really have to. Like I said, this weapon is pretty good for stunning and stuff, so... You're perfectly capable at this point. See right there, I got a, uh, a stun and was able to do an instant kill animation on that guy. This section right here, there are several guards that will come out if you alert them. So you get, can get yourself in kind of a tricky spot. It is a really tight area right here. So if you are going through the sort of loud and bloody way, <laughs> like I am right now, uh, just be aware of that. Maybe try to use kin, try to use some magic and keep your distance if that's your forte. Whatever, whatever you can to move through this area as effectively as possible. I'm pretty sure everywhere is locked except for the way that you're supposed to go. So, <laughs> not much exploration that you can do in this. This dungeon is pretty linear. One good thing about killing the guards is you are able to loot their bodies. Whereas when you just stun them, I don't believe you can do that. So that is an advantage uh, during this section of actually having some combat. So you can hear this one guard, sort of, 
or that was the prisoner actually uh, yelling. There's a quick time you can do on them, on the prisoners, if they start making a ruckus in order to silence them. But that was actually effective in luring the guards out. There was another stun kill that I got on that guy. So yeah, if you're taking the sneaky path, uh, if one of the prisoners starts hollering and making a fuss, I think you go up to him and it gives you the prompt to uh, press A really quickly and that quiets him down or something like that. So that helps you to be able to sneak and not draw attention to yourself, but since I was pressing forward with the kill everyone approach, uh, it was actually pretty effective in sort of luring them out of this area where there's a lot of just corners and barrels and things that can get in your way. So once you go through that door, you'll get a cutscene, and at the end of it, you'll be meeting back up with this guy, Arian Lavalette, who we chose not to fight in the beginning. And this is why when we meet back up with him in this section, in the dungeons, you're going to have the option to help him, and you want to do that because that's going to give you a perk that gives you some more inventory space. And that is something that I am extremely interested in obtaining. So carrying some more stuff is always good. When you go down here, you're going to be going into uh, an area with two guys, sort of a skinny scholar dude and an executioner. What I like to do is kind of run around here before they know what's going on and kill this guy. He's a scribe, actually, not a scholar. Although, similar things. <laughs> I got the stun kill on him, and then the executioner is like a, a heavy. He moves pretty slowly, and so you want to try to get around behind him and start doing some damage. Since he is so slow, you can sometimes do what I'm doing right now, which is sort of get him locked in the spot, because if you're just tapping A, you're going to be able to hit him really fast, and before he can turn around, you're already hitting him again. So that's kind of the thing that you want to do. You may not be able to get him completely killed in uh, one of those attacks, but uh, you will at least be able to do quite a bit of damage on him before he maybe turns around and, uh, and blocks you, and then you want to back up, roll around him, and start doing the same thing. So there's a lot of stuff down here that you want to loot. Plenty of leather and timber and cloth and iron and all kinds of stuff. So you just want to make sure that you look thoroughly around this room and pick up all the stuff that you can. I think you might actually pick up some better armor pieces down here as well. Some trousers or something. No additional weapons at this point. They sort of force you to go through this entire dungeon section with only the blackjack. But you do pick up some, some better trousers and some boots and things. Which is good. More armor is always good whenever you have the potential of fighting again. And there is another section with some guards that we're going to be going through in just a second. And I'm going to demonstrate how the sneaking works. So after you go down there, I guess that's optional. You don't really have to go down there and fight the executioner. So if you're having trouble with that, I think it's not 100% necessary. But it will give you you know, a good bit of loot. So that's cool. When you come up these stairs, you want to be careful here. There's going to be a guard at the top of the stairs. You can just see him sort of looking over the top there. And once he turns his back, you want to kind of immediately sneak up behind him. Obviously, if you were going in here the loud and bloody way like I was doing before, you could just sort of charge up there and kill him however you want to, but if you want to be a little bit sneaky like I'm doing right now, this is how you do it. So you want to look at the red dots on your minimap. That'll kind of show you where the guards are moving, and you want to make sure to sneak up behind them. 
make sure that you you can sort of check around your corners right here and follow this guy around and kind of take advantage of uh, when he turns his back you can come up around behind him as long as you stay to the left there you'll sneak up behind him and be able to knock him out and then you can hide behind this barrel here or set of barrels and kind of watch these guys right here they will have a little pattern and as soon as this guy turns his back you want to be moving towards him and knock him out hopefully before he gets to the end of his path if not the other guard might see his body and that could cause problems for you it might throw off his pattern the one that's going to be around this corner so you just want to make sure you move around as fast as you can and then this guy around here again you watch you want to watch the red dot and wait until he's at that corner sort of peek around see when he turns around and then start moving behind him and that is the last guard in this section and so you've effectively made it out of the dungeons you can run back and pick up Arian and carry him to where he wants to go and that's going to get you out of these dungeons and also give you that nice little perk that I was talking about before so it's slow going when you're moving with him <laughs> you know you gotta lug around a piece of beaten up meat so it's not the fastest travel ever but not too bad and he wants to go to the second door on the left here and as soon as you walk him in there you'll get a little scene where he opens a door for you that provides you with a way out of the dungeon which is awesome and you'll talk to him for a second and he'll start lighting these oil barrels on fire and there's nothing else really to do in here you don't have to wait for him to light all the barrels and stuff you can just go out of the room on the right there I was just kind of watching him for a second <laughs> because I had never really done this path I had kind of messed it up when I was going through on this difficulty before so he lights this whole place on fire luckily this fire is kind of different from the other fire in the game in that it didn't really hurt me I was thinking oh I need to get out of here I'm gonna get burned but it was alright and then once you get out uh, a little bit it will blow up so I suppose he just blew himself up in, with the oil barrels cuz I don't know why but that's what he wanted to do <laughs> and uh, you can grab a real sword from that rack right there and once you get out of the door you will have completed that part of the quest and you will, will see that the little perk strong back popped up on the right that means that you get 50 extra pounds of carrying capacity which is really excellent it might not sound like a whole lot but 300 versus 250 is quite a significant difference uh, in your ability to carry stuff and not get burdened and have to drop things and and that, whatnot and uh, you know with the necessity of getting money here <laughs> it, it's pretty important so that is is why we cho chose to do that certain thing the guy that we talked to new boy when you got right out of the dungeon was the guy that you talked to with the amulet before that you told mm, not sure if that's gonna work and it kept him alive if you told him yeah that's gonna be awesome he you would find his corpse here and be able to pick the amulet up off of it for whatever reason I, I thought that I had his amulet <laughs> 
And so that sort of messed up a quest for me in the next part uh, that I'll tell you about then. If you still want to do that quest, what you can do is follow him. At this point, uh, he'll head over to the right uh, with the other two guards, and if you follow him, uh, they'll all attack you. They'll sort of realize, oh, he was lying, and so you have to kill all three of them, and then you can pick up the amulet from his corpse. So that's the way that you do that if you if you want to complete that quest that I'll tell you how to do in the next one. But in any case, there's your achievement for finishing the prologue. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in chapter one.